Hello everybody, my name is Wilder, and unfortunately, I played Harvest Moon One World. Let me just say this now, if you enjoyed Harvest Moon One World, that's awesome, I'm actually really happy. Because when somebody can enjoy something that I can't, it means it wasn't a waste of time for everyone, and that's good. If you enjoyed Harvest Moon One World, let me know what you liked about it. Put it in the comments down below, I'd love to know. But let's get into what I thought about the game, starting at the very beginning. Harvest Moon One World released for all consoles and PC on March 2nd, 2021. The main premise of this Harvest Moon game is that after the Harvest Goddess disappeared from the world, many of the crops had disappeared as well. After finding out about the Harvest Sprites and finding a clue that may lead you to finding the Harvest Goddess, you set out on an adventure around the world to do just that. So the whole appeal of One World is that it's kind of open world. There are different areas that each have their own climates, weathers, cultures, and people to them. You're meant to travel from town to town while exploring along the way. Exploring for what exactly? Well, your guess is as good as mine, and I played the game. Okay, so I guess the Harvest Wisps? Yeah, the Harvest Wisps are a new mechanic in this game. These little wisps are scattered all across the world. Some come out only at certain times of day or night, but they all do the same thing. When you find them, they'll give you a seed that you can plant to grow different kinds of crops, to either sell, cook with, or turn in to complete requests. Sounds like an interesting idea, especially in a game that's kind of open world, but it's trash. It's trash. These Harvest Wisps are everywhere, just about all the time. They're never hidden, and the worst thing about them is that they give you random seeds. Maybe it isn't completely random, like, oh, Wilder, no, the Harvest Wisp that spawns outside of this town at exactly 3 p.m. each day will give you a tomato seed every time. That's great. I'm not going to remember that, because these things are littered everywhere you go. You'll never be able to keep track of them, and your bag is going to get full every time you go out with random seeds for crops you won't even need for a handful of hours into the game. But you have to talk to them because you need certain seeds to make progress. The reason these wisps are in the game at all is to promote exploration. But if I see a wisp every two steps, then there's no need to explore the world for them, which means that there's no need to even have them as a mechanic in the game. So yes, you're able to buy seeds in shops later in the game, but you're required to unlock it in a way. And to do that, you have to sell a bunch of specific crops first, which means you have to use the wisp system, and it's just a mess. In a previous video, I said this harvest wisp system was going to make or break this game. If it worked, it would have worked wonderfully, and if it didn't work, then it was going to fail horribly. There's no need for this stupid harvest wisp system. And the biggest reason for that is because of the ugly, bland, lifeless, uninspired shell of a world. This game's world has nothing in it. Every area looks the same, and the only difference between them all is their colors. I was someone who was actually excited to go explore the world because even though it didn't look that good, I still thought they were going to put a good deal of content in it so that you could actually be motivated to go explore. But nope, there's nothing here. Each area is made up of different paths that either all lead back to the main path or end up in a dead end with trees and rocks for you to break. That's it. That's your one world. I said a second ago that the world didn't look good, and it doesn't. And normally, you know, graphics aren't everything, but the textures are so flat, it makes everything and everyone in the game look lifeless. Speaking of everyone, though, where is everyone? Where are the people? I don't see anybody move an inch outside of their own area in town. I don't see people walking to or from anywhere. I don't see people using the different pathways outside of town. It's so empty and lifeless. There are barely even any animals. I mean, come on. You'll find a few animals wandering around, but there are so few. And again, they all have their own spots in the world that they never move from. And if there is anyone outside of town, it's because they were placed there to throw dialogue at you that you already knew. The dialogue, by the way. Oh my god, the dialogue in this game is so painfully uninspired and boring. I actually, I'm not kidding you, I couldn't take it anymore. I stopped talking to people whenever I saw them. Whenever I play older, you know, real Harvest Moon games or Story of Seasons games as well, I always find myself saying that I wish there was more dialogue. Or that, you know, it surely wouldn't have been too hard for them to write more dialogue for the characters. I love talking to them so much that I want to keep talking to them. I want new dialogue. It's one of my favorite parts of Farming Sims in general, building those friendships and relationships. Harvest Moon One World actually made me just stop talking to its characters. It made me avoid them whenever I could. Their dialogue is so boring, it barely builds up themselves, their homes, or the world. 
I think the worst offender of this, though, is the beginning of the game and its tutorial. Yeah, I know, we all hate tutorials, they're slow, most of us can pick up on what to do and how to play before the tutorial can even tell us. But Natsume begs to differ. They said, no guys, that's okay. Really, let us give you a 20 minute tutorial where we tell you all 20 different things pressing the A button can do. I'm not joking. And then after 20 minutes, you finally get to leave the starting area only for the first town to reel you back in for another tutorial, which shows you, you guessed it, 10 more things that the A button can do. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, in Harvest Moon One World, you can't switch which tool you have equipped. Instead, you basically have them all equipped at the same time. And which tool you use depends on what's in front of you and when you press the A button. Oh, you press the A button on a cow? Well, you use the milker. And then you immediately after that press A on some seeds on the ground? Watering can gets used. So I never actually thought about it before, but Harvest Moon One World taught me that switching between tools isn't in the way or a mechanic that stands in between me and the action. You know, it's not only there to pad out the farming day so it feels like I'm actually doing work. It's actually quite the opposite. Switching tools is there so that I can make some kind of impact and so that the whole system of using tools doesn't feel automated. I actually sat there while playing One World and thought multiple times, why doesn't the game just do it for me? All I'm doing is spamming the A button. It's actually amazing how much not being able to switch tools takes away from the game. And no, it's not just a situation of like, well, the alternative is pressing another button then spamming, so I don't see the problem. I'm talking about player impact and feel. The difference in feeling and impact on gameplay switching tools has compared to this is actually significant enough for me to bring it up. I've just never ever felt like the farming in my farming sim should be automated because I was making so little impact as a player. Speaking of impact on gameplay though, let's talk about another mechanic, one that I thought was going to be cool until I found out how limiting it actually is. That's the ability to pick up your farm and move it around the world. I personally thought this was going to be a really cool mechanic. Pick your farm up, explore the world, plop your farm down wherever you are to rest and take care of animals. That sounds awesome! but it's ruined by so many limiting factors. First of all, you can't just pick up the farm for free. There's this little robot on the farm, his name's Sparky. You need to feed items to him to get his charge up, and I guess to fuel him, and then you can pick up the farm. But when I picked up the farm, I noticed that the robot didn't come with me. Instead, there's one of him at every site where you can place your farm down in all the different areas. Meaning you can't place your farm wherever you want or wherever is most convenient to you. They're all pre-planned areas. I just wanted to put my farm down wherever there was room. I mean, the world is so empty anyway, just let me do it. I think the worst thing about it is the crops you plant don't come with you in your farm, which means that you have to go back to the area you were in last anyway to take care of your crops. So I understood this idea at first, right? Each different area has different climates and different levels of quality to their land, meaning you plant different crops in different areas, and depending on what you plant, where you plant it, you can get cool mutations for some crops. But there are two things that ruined all this for me. One is that because you have to keep going back and forth between all the areas anyway, you can never truly leave an area because you want the special climate and soil for each area to keep mutating crops. And two is that the area where you can plant crops is never really nicely laid out. It's just kind of messy. What would have been so much better is to just forget the mutations and let me carry the crops with me so that I could actually travel with my home and at least feel like I'm adventuring. Not like I'm being tied down to each new area I come across no matter where I go. That also would have brought the option of giving the player an actual field, which would have been nice. It would have felt better. It would have felt like the field was actually part of my farm. And the whole idea of moving your farm is ultimately ruined in the end anyway, because you can fast travel throughout the world, which is nice when you need to take care of all your crops around the world every day. But what's the point of moving your home if I can just fast travel everywhere anyway? And get this, you can't fast travel while riding a horse or any other type of mount which you want to ride because the world is so big and empty, you're so slow in it in comparison. So you better take your farm with you while you fast travel anyway, because you're going to want that riding speed. Do you see what I'm talking about? This game is just a bunch of ideas that people sat down and agreed, oh yeah, that's cool, yeah, that's cool, let's have that, and then implemented those ideas without actually thinking about how they would fit into and work, with not only the world itself, but with the rest of the mechanics as well. I can confidently say, that no one cared here. This wasn't anyone's passion. This game wasn't anyone's baby while in production, you know? Here's the biggest problem with Harvest Moon One World. Anyone, and I do mean anyone, could have made this game. This game has no identity and is so uninspired. I've never seen anything like it. 
I'm not joking. If you told me that a couple of kids straight out of college made this game to get a quick buck in the farming sim community, and then Natsume approached them and asked if they could have the game and add a few Harvest Moon elements to it and then shipped it out, I would believe you. I would believe- There's no reason for me not to believe you in that situation. I haven't even talked about a bunch of small problems that plague this game. Like, let me list a few off for you. The Switch version of this game. It has horrible stutters and frame pacing. The characters and animals just disappear or teleport around the world when they need to be somewhere. The request system sucks because your character accepts all requests immediately. You can't pick and choose which you want to do, so it's not a real system, it's just a checklist. When you take a request from a character, 9 times out of 10, their normal dialogue is gone and replaced by them telling you to go do their request. You lose stamina from walking around. Let me say that one again. You lose stamina from walking around. There are no real different cultures here, and it doesn't really feel like it either. All the characters at the end of the day just say the same things as everyone else, and there's no identity. There's no transition between areas and climates, no transition in the terrain or weather, it's just an immediate change. Like you know how you go to sleep on fall 31st and wake up on winter 1st and there's just snow everywhere? Imagine if that happened while walking across a bridge. Like it's that type of jarring for most areas. Listen, let me tell you something. Whenever I play a game, right, no matter how bad it is or just how much I personally dislike it, I always give it that fair chance and look at what it does right. Because if we praise the things done right in bad games, Hopefully the developers will understand and take that information to heart for any future projects. Here's an example, okay? I hate Paper Mario Sticker Star, but that game has some amazing music. Its soundtrack is actually pretty good. I'm not at all a fan of Room Factory Tides of Destiny, but I always say that the combat in that game was cool. It was flashy, it made you feel cool. I think it's important to point out what games do right, no matter how bad they may be. I can't find anything like this in one world for me personally. I just, I can't. You're gonna have to tell me what you found, because every time I find something I think will do good enough, it's ruined. I like that every area of the world has their own problem that you have to fix. It makes you feel important, like you're a traveler passing through who just wants to help. But that's ruined because every single time, it's just, oh no, this isn't going right. Uh, could you bring us X number of this item, please? And then you do when everything's fixed. Cool, on to the next area every time. It's so nothing. I said it in the beginning of the video, I'll say it again, if you like this game, that's awesome. I'm really glad you do, because at least that means it wasn't a waste of time for everyone. And again, let me know what you like about it if you do enjoy it. But for me personally, I would never, ever recommend this game to anyone, not even fans of farming sims in general. This game was so shockingly uninspired. And for the price they're asking? Never. Never, never, never. I've never seen a less deserving game when it comes to its price. But anyway, that's gonna be it from me today. That, that's gonna be it. Th thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, I've never, I've never seen it. I didn't even think I was gonna make this video. Really, I just, I've never seen a game like this before. Sorry if that was too, like, ranty, but hey, those are my actual, honest, genuine thoughts. That's gonna be it from me today. Have you played One World? Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Whether you liked it or you hated it, let me know. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. All links are down in the description along with the names of my wonderful, amazing patrons. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one.